welcome to Chris Cook for YouTube. I'm making a recipe today that really takes me back. Sherry, one of my viewers of my channel, has contacted me and asked me would I make caramel frosting, the old-fashioned caramel frosting. Now, you know, back in the day, that's what we used to call the cake. Now they call it caramel frosting. Whichever one you choose, it's okay. But I'm going to show you how to make this. You probably can remember your parents making it because it's not a fluffy type frosting. It's just more of a frosting that would just kind of drip over the side. So let's get started with the ingredients that you're going to need. In order to make this, it's real simple and it only requires a small amount of ingredients. When my mom did it, she did it with two cups of sugar, one stick of butter, and some carnation milk. But to this, I'm also going to add a little bit of vanilla. Now, you can add the vanilla or you can leave it out. Really, it's a personal preference. But really, what you need to make this is the sugar, the butter, and the carnation milk. So, those are the ingredients, and I'll meet you at the stove. Be right okay, back. this takes a small amount of time to make, so I'm going to go ahead and put my saucepan on top of the heat. And I have the butter sitting here. So I'm going to go ahead and melt this butter. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to burn that butter. You only want to melt it before you start to add the rest of your ingredients. So as you can see, my pot was already a little bit hot. My stove is. It's not going to take that long for me to get this melted down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to allow this to melt. It'll take maybe about a minute. And once it melts totally, I'll bring you right back. Be right back. Okay, now as you can see, my butter has melted, but it has not burnt. You don't want burnt butter. Okay, so it's just melted in the pot. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my sugar. Now this is going to cover a 8 inch cake. If you need it to cover a 10 inch cake, you're going to need a little bit more. You would need a stick and a half of butter instead of just one stick of butter. Now I have my uh, stove on a medium heat in order to make this. Now what I want to do now is I just want to get it a little bit slightly brown. You don't want to burn it. You want to get it slightly brown. So you're going to cook it for a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn my stove up just a little bit. Now, my mom used to make this all the time back in the day, and this is, um, it's really not a hard uh, recipe, but it's one that you do have to watch. For some reason, my stove seems like it's not getting hot enough, so... Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to allow this to burn, but I am going to allow this to um, start to get just a little bit brown. I may have it up too much, because you don't want to burn it. And you do want to get it brown. So I'm going to just uh, go away and allow this to get a little bit brown when it starts to get brown. Because it appears that my stove is really not heating like it should. When it starts to get brown, I'm going to bring you back and show you what this looks like. Be right back. Okay, now I'm back. I got my stove to heat up a little bit more. Now I want you to look. Now it wants to heat up too much. You see how it's beginning to turn um, dark. You see how the sugar and the butter is beginning to turn dark. 
you don't want to burn it. You just want to get it to turn dark like it is. And that just comes from continually mixing the sugar and the butter. Okay. Now, once I get this mixed, now as you notice, I have not burnt this. Do not burn it. Once you get this mixed, then you're going to add your milk to this. When you get it to the desired darkness that you want it. Okay? So this really, for me, is dark enough. Okay? Now, once I put this milk in here, it's going to start to bubble. Okay? So we got that. About the color that we want. You can take it down a little bit more if you choose to. But do not burn it. So that means you have to constantly sit and stir. Or stand and stir. Whichever one you prefer. My mom used to make this all the time. And this is like something I could probably make in my sleep. Okay, now. This is the desired color that I want it. So now you're going to go ahead and you're going to add your, your carnation milk. Now once you add your carnation milk, you're going to get a little bit of a splatter. Okay. So here we go. Okay, now this was about a cup of carnation milk that I added to this. You heard the little splatter. Now we're going to sit here, or, you know, you're at your stove, so now I'm going to, and I'm sitting in my stove. Now I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to stir this until it reduces down. You can see a little bit of the bubble, but I'm going to stir it until it reduces down. Now once it reduces down... Then you're going to have to let it cool before you can actually put it on your cake. So what I'm going to do, I'll stir it. And as you can see, it's beginning to thicken back. So you can see the little light bubbles over there. It's beginning to stick, thicken back. I'm going to stir it. And once I get it down a little bit lower where it's really started to get thicker, then I'm going to bring it back. Now, it's not a constant stir at this point, but you have to stir it. You have to stir it. Now, once it gets down a little bit, then I'll go ahead and I'll add my vanilla. But I'll bring you back when I get ready to do that. Because what you don't want to do is, you don't want this to, to stick. So you want to be aware and you want to continue to stir so, when it reduces down, I'll bring it back and I'll show you what it looks like. Be right back. Okay, now it's been cooking roughly about five minutes. And it's at this point, I'm going to add just a little bit of flavor. Not a lot. That's about a fourth of a teaspoonful. It's not a lot. And as you can see it, see it's glazed up real well. But it still needs to cook. That's raw sugar in there. So what it needs to happen is all of that sugar needs to cream down. But in the creaming down process, you do not want this to stick to the bottom of the pan. You want to keep it smooth. Now this is very hot. This is very hot. I remember back in the day my mom used to make this and she used to put it on cakes and those were the best cakes. I've already baked the cake, but I wanted to make this uh, for Sherry so she could see actually how it's done. So this is pretty much like a sugar roux because you don't want to burn, when you're making roux, you don't want to burn your oil and your flour mixture. And this is the same way. You don't want to burn this. But if you keep this on a low heat, you really won't have any problems with it. Now, when I take this off to cool, this is going to thicken up even that much more. See how it is? It's thick.
This is one of those old school frostings, but it's real, real good on a cake. More like the finger licking type cake. This is what you do. And see, this is it's got exactly the caramel color. Now, you can get yours a little bit darker if you want to. Just don't burn it. Because if you do burn it, you need to throw that away and start all over again. And what I'm basically doing now is really cooking the sugar and the butter and the milk. Now this whole process takes about 15 minutes to do. Because the hardest part is getting your sugar and your butter to a point where as it's dark enough brown for you. And then once you get it there, then you just go ahead and add that milk. And be careful with that milk because you're going to get a splatter. But once you get that splatter, that's it. Now some may ask me, why do you use carnation milk as opposed to using regular milk? Carnation milk, I, I think I've repeated this. I can't stress how many times, you know, I have repeated this. But carnation is a very good milk when you want something to be smooth and creamy. And that's exactly what you want with this frosting. You do not want to taste uh, any granulated sugar crystals. You don't want to taste that. Okay. That looks good. And that's about where it should be. And it is not burnt. Okay, now I've already baked my cake. But before I get ready to frost my cake, I'm going to bring you back and show you what this looks like when it's actually cool. Because this is just the consistency that you want. Because as it cools, it's going to thicken up even a little bit more. And you can tell when it's un undercooked because you're still going to see the granulated uh, crystals in it. And you can tell when it's there because you'll see the bubbly type thickness, which is what you see now. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop this from cooking right now. I'm going to allow this to cool. And I'll bring it back as soon as it cools. Okay, yeah. now I want you to look at this. Look at it. Because that has cooled down some. Not quite cool enough for me to put on my cake yet. But you see how it looks? That's the way it's supposed to look. And it does coat. See? Let me see if I can turn it into the camera. See how it coats? That's exactly the way it's supposed to look. Now you hear a little sound in the background. I'm cooking something on the other side of my stove. But just to run it up the side of the pan. See how it coats that? That's what it's supposed to look like. Now when it totally cools, I will frost my cake. Okay? And this is enough to cover your 8 inch cake. Like I said, if you wanted to cover a 10 inch cake, you just have to make a little bit more. But what I will do, when I post the recipe, I'll post it for a 10 inch cake. That way you'll have enough. In order to make it. And this is just like. This is not your fluffy frosting. This is more like. Your drippy type. Thick glaze type frosting. Okay. Alrighty. I'll be right back. Okay now we're back. And I just wanted to show you what the cake looked like. First of all I want to tell you. So people don't start you writing me. And saying well you didn't show us how to bake the cake. This is just the 7-Up cake batter, and I do have that online. Instead of putting it in a tube pan, which is what I normally do, I just did it in the cake pans itself. Okay, when you're dealing with a frosting like this, one that drips, it's best to just cut little strips of wax paper and then put it all around uh, the bottom, and that way you won't get your cake plate, whatever it is that you're going to be serving it on, you won't get it all messed up. And then you just take this. What I did was I just cut out some sheets that's about this long. Took it and I stuck it up underneath my cake. And really I don't need to be removing it right now because the cake is really not cool enough. It's still in the dripping stages. But I'm going to go ahead and remove it just so I can show you actually what it looks like. And what I didn't do was to mess up my uh, cake plate that I'm actually going to 
you know, serve this on. As you can see right here, it's still dripping just a little bit. But if you can see the color of the frosting, the color of the frosting is exactly what you would want it to be. It's that caramel type color or that brown type color. Now, one of the things I want to show you about this pot, and remember this was the pot that I cooked it in. When you get ready, as soon as this is cool enough for you to go ahead and frost your cake, go ahead and frost your cake. Don't let it completely cool. Because if you let it completely cool, cool it's going to be much harder to deal with see how it's a little bit harder to fall now i can get this to stick to the cake but it's not without having to rub it a couple of times and that's something that you really don't want to do see i had to rub it a couple of times in order to get it on but i was able to use every bit of this it didn't stick to the bottom of my pan. That's all done. Now, this is one of the cakes that I am going to uh, have for my Christmas Day dinner. It just ended up working out like that, so it's one of the sweets that I'll go ahead and use. And yes, I know that we're three days out from Christmas, yeah, but it's okay to cook the cake that far in advance and go ahead and just cover it and have it out. Just wanted to show Sherry how this is actually done. I promised it to her. This is not only for Sherry, it's for all of my viewers if you don't know how to make that old time caramel is what we called it caramel cake caramel cake whichever one you prefer this is the way you do it okay that's what i'm bringing you today caramel caramel frosting for the cake okay and as always thank you for watching crystal for you too and happy holidays bye